Hi, my name is Kate Smith. Thanks for joining the sixth episode of Planned Parenthood Presents The State of Abortion. This week, we're continuing to document the impact of the Supreme Court overturning Roe versus Wade with on the ground reports of the latest state laws and legal fights. I'm here to keep you informed so you can decide for yourself. It's officially been two months since the Supreme Court overturned Roe versus Wade, a decision that gave states the right to ban abortion. And as we've seen, many have. As of Wednesday, 16 states had abortion bans in place. And while no new states have put abortion bans in place this week, some have made their existing bans even more severe. On Thursday, Idaho replaced its six-week ban that we told you about last week with a new near-total ban that prohibits abortion after pregnancy is, quote, clinically diagnosable. The state says the ban has exceptions, but it's not that simple. If you read the new law's language, you'll notice that the word exception it doesn't appear at all. That's because Idaho's abortion ban uses something called affirmative defense, Here's how that works. Under the new law, providing an abortion in Idaho for any reason at all is illegal, full stop. However, the legislation spells out that the doctor can defend themselves if they can prove that the abortion was necessary to prevent the death of the patient. Maybe that seems in the weeds, but think about it this way. Doctors in Idaho could face felony charges for providing life-saving healthcare to patients, period. They'll have the opportunity to defend themselves, yes, but as they're facing a patient's medical emergency, they'll need to weigh best medical practices with whether they can win a lawsuit using that defense in a prosecution. That exception mechanism, specifically as it applies to life-saving care, is part of the Biden administration lawsuit against Idaho, which said that the law conflicts with the federal requirement for a hospital emergency department to provide care when a pregnant person faces a medical emergency. Idaho's ban also uses a, quote, affirmative defense for abortions performed when the pregnancy was a result of rape. But that defense only applies if the patient reports the rape to law enforcement and they share that report with their provider. But we know that reporting sexual violence, it comes with its own set of problems. According to the Department of Justice, about 80% of rapes and sexual assaults go unreported. Because of Idaho's ban, Oregon is expected to see a jump in out-of-state patients, and that's something that the state is prepared to handle. In 2017, lawmakers passed the state's Reproductive Health Equity Act, which both protects the right to abortion and it ensures access. Oregon Governor Kate Brown championed that legislation. A lifelong abortion rights supporter and a former clinic escort, Brown told us that her state's laws protect not just Oregonians, but patients in neighboring states seeking care as well. There is going to be obviously a flood of abortion patients coming into Oregon from Idaho, from other states probably as well. Um, I'm curious what your message is to those patients. What do you want them to know? I want them to know that Oregon is a safe, welcoming, and inclusive state to anyone who wants to come here seeking to access reproductive health services. Our uh, folks across the state are confused, they're concerned, they're anxious, and they're afraid. And that's here in Oregon where we have access. Um, and so I can't imagine what's happening in other states like Idaho. You mentioned chaos and confusion. Are we in a public health emergency? Oh, absolutely. And the harsh reality is, Kate, you cannot ban abortion. You can only ban safe abortions. And unfortunately, this burden is disproportionately borne by our women of color, our families with uh, low incomes, in our rural communities, and it's absolutely unacceptable. In our conversation, Governor Brown also told us that her office has the discretion to refuse to extradite people who have sought abortion care in Oregon in certain circumstances, and she's looking at options for strengthening her authority. In addition to Idaho, Tennessee also began prohibiting abortion at all stages of pregnancy, marking an even stricter law than its previous six-week ban. Tennessee lawmakers say the ban has exceptions for situations of rape, incest, and life-saving care. But just like in Idaho, those so-called exceptions, they're really just affirmative defenses. Looking to next week, we're expecting the South Carolina state legislature to continue to debate its own near-total abortion ban. On Monday, the full South Carolina House is expected to vote on legislation that would ban abortion at all stages of pregnancy. And if it passes, the legislation will head to the Senate the week of September 6th. 
But as lawmakers are considering this near total ban, last week, the South Carolina Supreme Court blocked the state's six week abortion ban, while a case against it proceeds. And a few more court updates. In Michigan, abortion will remain legal and accessible. Last Friday, a county judge issued a restraining order against the state's 1931 abortion ban, blocking county prosecutors from enforcing it. For more of our conversation with Oregon Governor Kate Brown, as well as updates on all the bans and legal fights that we told you about, head to stateofabortion.org. See you next week.